Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors. My name is Chris and I'm bringing this video to you from a bright and sunny Westlake Village, California. It is Wednesday afternoon, August 26, 21. And I wanted to bring this video a little different than normal because something big is about to happen. And what I want to talk about a little bit right now is the exponential age. So the thesis is built on the fact we are about to go through the fastest period of technological growth and adoption in all recorded human history over the next five to 10 years. And guess what? Nobody's prepared for it. Humans were simple creatures, right? We can't really understand exponentiality. It's just not something our brains are meant to understand. So I'm gonna try and break it down by looking at the internet, right? F between 1990 and the year 2000, the internet grew at 63% a year. That's the fastest period of growth for the internet because it went from zero or low numbers to very large numbers. Again, that period, the inter internet grew users by 63% a year. It was the fastest adoption of technology in all recorded human history, much faster than the mobile phone and the telephone and the microwave and the washing machine and all those great things you have in your house. So, these are network businesses, and I'll come on to that in a little bit because it's really important to understand that concept. So, okay, how's crypto doing? Crypto is growing at 113% a year. U new users are growing at 113% a year. It's the same number of users the internet had in 1997. And, you know, people told you the dot-com crash was a disaster. Well, it wasn't. Why? Because out of that came Facebook, Amazon, and Google. I mean, you name it. So the crash, it was just the start. It wasn't the end. So we're growing at 113% a year. So that's double the fastest adoption of any technology in all recorded history. Okay, that's exponential growth. And then you have Metcalf's Law, which is... You have a, you value a network according to the number of users and the kind of interconnectedness they have with each other. And that's what, you know, was mobile phone companies, then, you know, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Google. That's, that's why they all exploded. So Bitcoin, we're at 140 million users today of crypto worldwide. So let's say you want to be conservative and lower the growth rate to 83% instead of 113, right? You're going to be at a billion users by 2024. And by 2027, you'd be at three and a half billion users. That's, you know, three years from now, 2024, uh, billion users. And, you know, call it six years or five years from now, three and a half billion users. So you're probably thinking, okay, I can't really get my head around this. This guy's talking too fast, but that's how fast this thing is growing. And it gets you to three and a half billion or half of the world using crypto by 2027. So basically, you're, you know, by the end of this decade, half the world will be using crypto. And I think that's truly, truly extraordinary. And what kind of adoption am I talking about? The adoption is a network of money and all of finance. Bitcoin's going to eat the stock market, the bond market, the real estate market. And I wouldn't say it's just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency in general. It connects all the digital world in a way that value is transferable, it's storable, it's ownable, and it's recordable. So why Bitcoin has exponential growth is that it was a computer science breakthrough, right? It's life savings technology. For everybody in the world whose fiat money is being debased, because every time the government goes deeper and into, deeper into debt, I mean, I think they, they added some 39% of all the money in the world was created in the last 12 months. And so at this point in time, right, the next 10 years, we go up to maybe 3.5 billion users, conservatively, I'd say that would be the biggest exponential growing thing you've ever seen. And all this is happening at the same time when what? 
AI goes mainstream exponentially. Robotics go mainstream exponentially. Vehicles, right? Autonomous vehicles go AI exponential. Uh, EV technology, genetic sciences, distributed computing power, all these things, 5G technology, space, Wi-Fi, they're all happening at the same time. They're all connected and driven by networks. So it's time to hold on to your hats and get ready for a world to change very, very fast, faster than we've ever seen. This is like a hypercharged new version of the internet. And I'm telling you, if this makes any sense to you, make sure you download our free investor guide by clicking in, uh, clicking the link in the description below. And so what am I going to do now? Let's jump into these price action charts themselves here and what do we see? Bitcoin basing right around the white 200 simple day moving average right here at about, oh, call it 46,000 or, yeah, call it 46,000. As long as Bitcoin is closing dailies above this range, and by the way, we did hit our target a couple days ago right at 50,000, uh, right in this blue box. I call this the blue box of peace and prosperity or death and destruction. And we did uh, say that once Bitcoin hit 50,000, very likely to pull back and pick up a little selling pressure there. Um, I would be looking at this level. If we do close below 46,000, I'm looking for a quick move down to 44, probably a bounce there. And, um, and really um, my position, my thesis was that Bitcoin would run up to 50,000 and probably come back down to 29,000 uh, just to scare, scare everybody out of the market. But when did my thesis change there? When did I decide, you know what, that's probably not very likely to happen? Well, I'll tell you right now, it is because the blue buy signal on the hash ribbons indicator, which we just received this month, and I'm gonna throw on my secondary chart here so you can see this blue buy signal right here this is the guy. We've only had 13 of these blue buy signals in the history of Bitcoin. Now, I'll let you know something. Until we got the blue buy signal, Bitcoin has never made a new all-time high. So I'll repeat, blue buy signal, unless we get a blue buy signal, right? We, we never had a new all-time high. So that's why I was, you know, predicting or, you know, uh, my thesis was, Bitcoin very likely makes a lower high at 50,000 and comes back down because we didn't have this blue buy signal until August 7th. And then we confirmed that macro reversal with Bitcoin. Let me see if I can get these charts naked here. Take off some of these guys here so you can see this a little more clearly. Uh, so Bitcoin put in its first higher high right here and then a higher low at 38,000. And that's where we got the confirmation on the 21st, along with the golden cross on the daily time frame, which is where the uh, green 55 and the purple 200 day moving average cross to the upside. And if you want to see that a little more clearly, let me take off a few more indicators. Boom, boom, boom. So, let me get rid of those Bollinger Bands and boom. That is the golden cross right there. Now the last golden cross we had, let's take a look here. When was that? May 11th, 2020, Bitcoin at $8,000. And what happened to that? We got that golden cross. We had an unabated run from $8,000 to $64,000. Not a bad move. So using all these indicators in confluence with each other, uh, once we've had the blue buy signal, Bitcoin has never come back and broke the last, the prior daily high or low, which would be coming in right here at 38,000. Uh, this isn't financial advice. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just using my experience and showing you what I'm looking at. So hopefully that's helpful for you and whatever your trading strategy is. Um, Let's take a look at Ethereum 2 right now, and I'm going to throw my other moving averages back on. Oh, let's get this guy right here. So that's a 21-day EMA, 89-day the, the Cyan 89, 
purple 200, the blue 377, the red 10 simple, and the white 200 simple day moving average. Those are the ones I like to use. And Ethereum here, again, we're basing off the 21 on the daily. As long as Bitcoin is holding above 3,000, I am, or I'm sorry, as long as Ethereum is holding above 3,000, I'm going to give you a little target here on the next target with using a Fibonacci retracement here. And so next target's going to be 3,500. 3, if we can break 3,500, I'd say look at 3,800. Now, to the other side, this is what I like about the Fibonacci retracement tool is you can go ahead and do a bearish retracement, which is going to be like that. And if we move here, so we get a break below 3,000. Um, call it, yeah, 3,000 right there or 29.94. I'm expecting a move down to the 618 here, which is at 2700, probably a bounce there, and we'll judge it from there. I hope this is helpful. Um, and why don't we take out, check out traditional markets here? And it looks like NASDAQ putting in a top uh, coronavirus fears, or call it COVID variant fears, whatever you want to call it. You've got the taper talk with Jackson Hole meetings going on right now. And you've got the war in Afghanistan. And if we do get a tick below the last daily prior low, I would be expecting a move back down to at least 15,100. And uh, then we judge it from there. Um, that, let's take a look there. And what else do we want to look at? Gold, sitting here at 1,800. I think gold is consolidating here. And, uh, you know, do we, do we stay with the trend and lower highs and lower lows? I don't know if I would call this a higher low yet, but until we can get back above, you know, uh, the last, you know, daily couple of highs here, I'd expect uh, Bitcoin or, or, or gold remains with the trend to the downside, sideways and down, until the dollar decides it wants to fall off a cliff. And the dollar has just gotten very bullish, uh, do dollar confirming some, you know, macro. Um, we got higher lows on the daily, and then we just got a higher high right there. Um, if you take a look at it on the weekly, uh, again, we, we did take out that high. So we got a higher high, and guess what? We got higher lows, and I'm going to go ahead and let's see if we can get a target on the dollar here, which the dollar moves a lot slower than everything else. Uh, that's one thing about, um, you know, Forex and, and, and trading, you know, dollars and yens. It just moves a lot slower, but has a big impact on all of our lives, right? We want that dollar to go down so we can buy more, more, more things uh, with our dollars. But using that Fibonacci retracement coming out of this, uh, you know, consolidation, I'd say... Where would we want to draw that out from here? The bullish retracement. So we're looking at something like a target back up to 94 cents uh, over some time. You know, this is a weekly, so this is going to take some time um, unless the dollar wants to come back down and take out, you know, I'd say probably 92 cents. We get to move back down to... 92.10 and 91. So between 91 and 94, what we need, dollar goes down. Usually that's decent for Bitcoin. However, even as the dollar's been going up, Bitcoin's been going up. So, you know, sometimes these markets, they just, you know, they start to, the trend starts to change. So you keep your eye on the trend. The trend is your friend. The trend is your friend till the end of the trend. All right, that's it, guys. Hope you had a great day and a blessed evening. Take care.